Hey, this is Mike Ofka here, and I'm in my family's RV. We just returned from a trip to Kentucky, and this was a mid-December trip. We wanted to sneak in one last adventure before putting the RV away for the season. I'm getting ready to finish winterizing it right now, but I wanted to take an opportunity to make a quick video for you and show you some of the issues we had with the RV. Now, it's no secret that if you're planning on getting one of these RVs, it's probably going to have its share of issues off of the bat. These are not made with quality control in mind. They are hand built by factory workers who need to pump them out quickly. That being said, I want to show you some of the stuff we've had to deal with and how I went about fixing and resolving some of these problems. So we'll start off with some of the more simple problems that we needed to address and then I'll end the video with the most egregious act of poor craftsmanship that was foist upon us and we've had to endure um, and it's pretty bad. So make sure you stick around to the end and here we go. I'm going to start out with this stupid problem that we had to fix. Okay, so as soon as I drove off the lot, I went and I unsnapped this and it broke and I had to replace this piece. So that's really simple. You can buy these for like $7 on Amazon. And all it is is a strap that holds the door in place when you're going down the road so it's not sliding all over. Problem number one. Okay, so this microwave oven is not the first microwave oven that came with this RV, it is the second one. The first microwave oven decided to just stop working in the middle of our second camping trip. It wouldn't heat up our food anymore. So I called the dealership, being that this was under its one year warranty, we were entitled to a new microwave. However, I had to drive the RV to the dealer, which is located on the other side of Ohio. We live on the eastern side and the dealer was on the western side. And so they had to look at the microwave and diagnose the problem. They wouldn't accept my description of the problem over the phone. They needed to see it for themselves in order to honor the warranty, which I think is pretty stupid. I could have just taken the microwave out, sent it to them. They could have sent me a new one, but no, that's not how it works. We had to deliver the microwave with the RV to the dealership. They then took the microwave out. And what I find really funny is that the uh, new microwave that they gave us, they didn't have in stock. So they did end up sending us a new microwave in the mail, which I had to reinstall myself. And we had to enjoy a trip out to the other side of Ohio without a microwave oven. And we actually had an empty hole here for that trip. So that was a pain in the butt, but we got it fixed. Okay, so here's the window at the slide out. And if you look closely, you'll notice above here on the bulkhead, there's a tear in the wallpaper. And that was a blemish that they had covered up with a little advertisement sticker. It said something like, more windows than any other RV in its class. And that was stuck over top of there to hide the blemish. So yeah, thanks Forest River. Okay, so this is a Norcold refrigerator and our first few trips, we noticed that the door would pop open when we were driving down the road and all of our stuff would fall out. I'd have my beers and food all over the floor. We've had a couple of messes. So the solution to that, if you look closely, this little tab, when you shut it, it pops and clicks into this tab down here. Okay, but what was happening was this part was too high. I think it just kind of pulls, yeah. This pulls off like so. And then um, you can see, and then you can see there's a couple of bolts right here. So this top bolt, I put a washer spacer behind there and rebolted it on, which forced this tab to go down lower. Now that that tab is lower, it's catching this catch 
and locking in place. And that solved the problem for us. Okay, so these curtains have these little, uh, well, this one used to have a bracket that attached to the wall. Here's one that still works. Okay, it's a little plastic bracket that just holds the shape of the curtains and keeps them from swinging around. And I will tell you that the first time somebody leans on one of these or bumps it, if a kid's playing and it bumps it or something, it's just gonna break off. And that's happened to one, two, three. So three of those brackets are now broken. But if I never told you about it, you probably wouldn't even notice it. So we're just gonna leave it that way. I mean, really, who cares? So on one occasion, I did lose power to this outlet. And then I realized that this is a GFCI protected outlet. But look at it. You can't figure out how to reset the thing. There, I even took the outlet out of the wall, looking at it, scratching my head. Then it dawned on me that that circuit must be chained to the other GFI outlet in the bathroom. And sure enough, there it is. And this one has a reset on it. So if one of these outlets trips, both of those outlets are not gonna work. And the reset is on the one in the bathroom. I reset that outlet and then the problem was solved. I wish someone would have told me about that. So these lug nuts that come on the RV have a uh, covering over top of them. I noticed when I got home that one of these lug nuts was completely stripped and rounded from a uh, impact wrench that just spun over top of it. And there was no way I could get it off. So I had my friends at Murph's RV in Wintersville, Ohio. They helped me to remove that lug nut and replace it. So. I suggest that you inspect all your lug nuts prior to taking your new RV home. I wish I would have done it. Speaking of tires, uh, these have the uh, good old Castle Rock STs. Now I've heard lots of scary stories about these tires and I haven't had any issues myself. Uh, I was told that they can crack on you but I've just been keeping my eye on them and they're holding up. Um, I don't plan on spending any money that I don't need to spend on it right now. So I've gone over some pretty rough roads with these. I've hit some nasty potholes, uh, went into a ditch actually one time and they're still holding strong. So I'm gonna wait until I need, need to change the tires or maybe before our first cross-country trip if we're going farther than a thousand miles or something I may replace those when I first bought the RV one of the things I did was I opened up the slide and just left it open during a torrential rain downpour and I noticed when I slid it back in that there was water coming in all over the floor inside the RV and the water was coming from the bottom of the slide so I slid it back out and inspected it closely and noticed that on the other side, underneath here on the bottom of the slide was sopping wet and water was just all through there. I would touch it and my hand would come away dripping wet. So that told me water was getting in the slide somehow. I noticed that on this top rail there was no sealant at all. But the rain would hit this and drain down the side. And when it got to the bottom, this is a piece that I added. But before I added this, it looked just like the other side. The water would drip off of the cheap uh, vapor barrier that they have underneath there. It looks like this. It's already gotten chewed up a little bit. So water was wicking in under there. And I also think that water was draining. I noticed that the water liked to drain down this rail. 
and it was draining right over top of these screws. So I removed all the screws and I put a dab of silicone inside each hole and then put the screws back in. I also ran some uh, silicone beads along those rails, top and bottom. I siliconed the top of this rail and I added this piece of vinyl flashing that I measured and cut and just screwed it right on on the underside of this rail. Now this edge right here is just a little lower than the bottom of the slide. So now what's happening is the water hits and runs down and drips off of this edge instead of running underneath. You can see here where there's a stream of water that tends to run down and runs right over this edge and right off of the drip edge. And that solved the problem. I need to clean it. One of the issues I also had on a regular basis was that these locks right here, it seemed like it was always difficult to get the key to turn. You can see right now I'm struggling and I would always fight with it until I discovered that if you just bump the key up so that the teeth are forced downwards, then it'll turn a lot easier for you. So again, I'm pushing up on the key opposite of the teeth and that will help you to turn it. And now for the worst problem that we had to resolve, it was this, the toilet. This is not the toilet that came with the RV. This toilet here is a Thetford toilet that I bought from Walmart. It's got um, antifreeze in there for winterization. But anyway, the toilet came with it was one of the infamous Dometic 300 series toilets that had a leaky seal in the bottom. And what would happen was every time you would use the toilet, water would seep in to a little space behind the bowl. And it would just sit there and become stagnant and uh, really, really gross. We noticed the smell. We, I mean, we didn't know. I was doing research, trying to figure out if we needed to solve it with a vent stack modification. Maybe that the vent was plugged or something, but no, the toilet itself was defective. And I cannot believe that they didn't put recall on that toilet because what ended up happening was the bowl became so full of stagnant sewage water that it started to splash out of the back when I was going down the road. I would come in here and there would be disgusting sewer water all over the floor and it stunk up the entire RV. It actually ran out on the floor and we had some blankets and toys down here that got wet with sewer water and we had to throw them away. So, I got very upset as you can imagine and I ripped that toilet out of here once I discovered what the problem was. Bought this cheap toilet from Walmart. I think this was $110. And this is a very common toilet that's in most RVs. You can see my little plumbing job. I had to, because the inlet is on the top of this toilet, it was on the base of the old toilet. So I had to use a coupler and put together a uh, short piece of PEX piping in order to adapt that to fit. So I called Dometic and I complained. And uh, they ended up sending me a nice Dometic 310 porcelain toilet that I have not installed yet. It is sitting out in the garage waiting to be installed. I'm gonna use it next year, but um, yeah, I mean, that's just a really disgusting issue that is very common from what I have seen. And there was never a recall issued. I mean, that really kind of uh, took away from our whole experience of owning an RV. It was, the smell in here got pretty bad towards the end of the summer. And it, it was a very 
disgusting problem and even potentially a health hazard. Forest River should have been aware of this problem and replaced the toilets before selling it to the public. And um, Lord knows how many people are out there suffering with this uh, problem that we had. Uh, but it's a bad one. I'm just glad it's fixed now. So to answer the big question, do I think that buying this RV was a mistake? And the answer to that is definitely no. For the amount of money that we paid for this RV, we are getting a lot of RV and a big bang for our buck. Most of this stuff can be fixed very easily with doing a little bit of research, Google searching, and finding videos like this one. Also, the vibe of all of this is that we're pulling our little cabin with us around when we're traveling places. And I like to have a little bit of that rustic charm where it's not so perfect and pristine that you're worrying about every little thing. That to me would take away from the experience. So the biggest problem for me was the toilet issue that we found out about the hard way. I really wish Forest River would have done a better job in preventing that issue. So thank you for tuning in, watching this video. If you like what you see, please hit subscribe, hit that notification bell, leave a comment below and check out some of my other RV and camping videos in this playlist. Until next time, thanks for tuning in and stay safe and be well. Peace.